and uh, good day to everyone out there. I'm Yusna Riza Hamid from UITM Penrock and we're going to discuss question common test April 2018 uh, from part 320 exam. Um, question 3 MFRS 140 investment property. So let's start. Okay. Question 3A. Question 3A. You are to state whether items can be classified as investment property under MPFRS 140 uh, investment property. So if you are asked to classify under IP, if it falls under the IP, you will state as investment property. If it does not fall within the definition of IP, you will just say that it's not an IP. Let's look at Mega Berhad. A construction company owns a plants and machinery. So very clear. Plant and machinery uh, that is held for rental. The word rental is important, but this is not about land or a building or parts of a building or both land and building that are held for rental, right? So this is plant and machinery. So this is not an IP. Jaya Berhad owns a multi-story building. It's a building. And 90% was rented out. So the whole building, 100% building, was not being rented out, but 90% was rented out. So it is likely that this is an IP, assuming uh, that the building can be sold off separately. Like in Malaysia, they have the strata title being awarded to uh, the uh, owner of a condominium unit. Uh, and therefore, those uh, particular units could be sold off separately. It has a separate legal title so that is what you meant by uh, the word can be sold off separately so if you have no uh, further information that is for you to assume that um, the building uh, can be sold off separately unless stated otherwise but if you look at the this building here 90 percent was actually more than significant right uh, since that is being rented out Another company, JCD Berhad, bought a 10 acre of land. It's a land for undetermined future use. Undetermined future use is actually falling under capital appreciation, land health or capital appreciation. So you are not sure with what to do with the land that you acquire. The FRS 140 says that that should be NIP because undetermined future use. There is also the same case if you have the land and land is, is left vacant without anyone uh, using it at all. And that is also considered as under capital appreciation. This is an IP. This is an IP. But this is not an IP because there was a plan and machinery. So let's look at the answer. Yes, A is an I, not an IP, B and C is IP. Next, we have a company, FEMA Prima, Berhad, purchased a 12th floor landed property. So the landed property is like multi-level property. Yeah, You have 12 floors and that costs you 18 million for the whole 12 floors. And that was purchased on 1st of January 2016. The trade discount is 1% of the purchase price. So the purchase price is 80 million. So you are given the discount of 1%. So this 1% discount must be deducted to get the correct uh, price for the initial cost. The first and second floors are used for admin purpose. So if you have a two out of 12 floor used for admin purpose, that means that is going to be a PPE. Why it is going to be a PPE if that is going to be sold off separately? In this question, the property cannot be sold separately. So therefore, you need to look at the rest of the property is being rented out to various tenants under short-term operating lease. If you rent out to the third parties and that is under operating lease, that is uh, going to be an IP, right? Investment property. So 12 floor, where two floors are admin use. The remaining 10 floors are for rental 
to uh, others under operating lease. However, this is an important statement. The property cannot be sold off separately. So under MFRS 140, if the property cannot be sold off separately, you need to look at which portion is more significant. Is the portion held for rental to the third party more significant? Here it is 10 out of 12 floor. Or is the portion held for admin use more significant? Because this is property with mixed use or property with dual use, right? So the one held for admin purpose, which is likely to be an uh, PPE, is just two floors from the 12th floor. So that is not that significant, not significant, right? Whereas the one that is rented out to the various tenant under the short-term oper operating lease, is more significant right there. so therefore because it cannot be sold off separately the whole 12th floor the whole 12th floor will be accounted for as ip none of them will be accounted for as ppe even though it was held for admin purpose because the two portion is not significant so therefore the property with mixed use or with dual use you need to look at the significant uh, portion, significant floor, significant level, significant units, or at the same time, you need to ask yourself, can that units or can that portions or can that floors be sold off separately? So under Malaysian law, these are allowed. But in certain jurisdiction, uh, to sell it off separately, that is not permitted. So it will depend on the also the law in that particular jurisdiction so in Malaysian law that is possible they call it strata title the following costs are incurred in the connection with the property legal and agency fees yeah this legal and agency fees is going to be included included so this is actually going to be included Admin expenses will be excluded because admin expenses are day-to-day -day expenses. So that will be excluded. Launching, launching also will be excluded from the calculation of initial cost and the repair and maintenance will be excluded. Excluded does not mean that it will not be recorded. It still will be recorded as an expense. You will still debit admin expense, debit launching cost, debit repair and maintenance. But you will not go and debit them to the investment property. You will credit bank or whatever accrued expenses. So let's look at what is the requirement. Okay, you have information here that inform that FEMA adopted the fair value model. Okay, under fair value model, there is no divisation. Under fair value model, there are also no impairment testing. Under fair value model, the asset will be reported at the fair value. However, if there are changes to the fair value, the fair value changes will be reflected in the statement of profit or loss, either as an income or either as an expense. So here, it was being adopted by the company to measure its investment property subsequently. Subsequently means measurement after initial recognition. The fair value of the property on the 1st of December 2016 is 19 million. So this is the first fair value assessment. You remember, I don't say the word revalu revaluation model. This is fair value model. Don't get confused between fair value model and revaluation model by now you should be clear that the revaluation re model still provide depreciation and the fair value model there is no depreciation no impairment and it was determined at 19 million uh, on 31st of December 2016 and 24 million on 31st of December 2017 look at the requirement you are asked to prepare the journal before you can prepare the journal, you need to make sure that you get the initial costs correct so that you can record the transaction on 1st of January 2016. So this is the initial recognition and measurement journal. Second one, prepare the journal entries to record the changes in fair value on the 1st of December 2016. Either it's a gain or a loss. It shall not be debited or credited to the ARR. That is totally wrong. 
this is a fair value model. There is no such thing as assets revaluation reserve. That is only under revaluation model. So whatever changes in the fair value will be reflected directly in the income statement or in the statement of profit or loss, right? Which is part of expense or part of an income. Next. So the first journey entry is to record the acquisition of the investment property. Before you can go and debit the investment property, you need to work out the initial cost. So I've mentioned earlier there was a trade discount of 1%. That is 180000 because you get 1% from $18 million and plus 2000 the costs that are related to uh, the costs which are being capitalized. That one is referring to... This part, yeah. This one is referring to this cost that we earlier mentioned, which is the legal and agency fees. Maybe to draw up this SNP agreement, sales and purchase agreement pertaining to the uh, investment building or property that you are buying. So you may have to pay for that fee, and that fee should be included as part of the investment property. Uh, initial cost. And that was 19.82 million. You will be debited in the investment property. If you pay cash, you will credit to the bank. But if you uh, uh, do not pay cash, it's a deferred payment or miss by, uh, by credit, it will be credited to the uh, payable or whatever name of the bank that give you the loan to uh, buy the property. Before we proceed with the journal, I will advise and show you the Timeline diagram again. So we put the information as at 1st of January. The, what is the initial cost? It was 19.82 from your calculation just now. Show what is the fair value as at the end of that year, after a year, right? And then you show the second fair value. When you put this nicely like this, you'll have a better visual of what actually happened to the company. So there is no depreciation and there is no impairment for both here because you adopt fair value model. Yeah, fair value model, no impairment, no depreciation. Next, compare the uh, cost or the initial cost, which is a carrying a value as at 31st of December 2016. You do not charge depreciation, you do not charge any impairment. So if you compare that, you can see that there is a drop of 0 0.82 million, which is a loss on fair value change. There is a drop. However, if you compare the one on 31st of December last year plus the one in the current year, 31st of December 2017, current year, you can see that there is a hike, fair value change, or there is an increase of 5 Median and that five million is five, a fair value gain. The loss, this one is a loss, it will be debited to the SOPL, whereas the gain it will be credited to the SOPL. Okay, that is the journal entry as at 31st of December 2016. The fair value loss will be in the SOPL 820 from the comparison between the carrying amount at cost and the fair value as at 31st of December. It will be credited to the investment uh, property because this is a loss, right? Loss will reduce the asset, right? And the second one is on 31st of December 2017. Investment property will be debited because there is a fair value gain. Gain is charged in other income in the so for 5 million, 24 million as compared to 19 million from the workings that we have done. Next is a part C of the question. This one is rather uh, lengthy in terms of questions. We have Suri Berhad and other company owns an office building, and that office building has been used for any purpose with a carrying cost of 14 million. So that is the cost of the office building. The company adopts revaluation model for the office building. So office building was used for admin purpose. So this is a PPE. So PPE they adopt revaluation model on the subsequent measurement. On 1st of January, the building had a remaining useful life of 20 years. So uh, that was the date 
of uh, first of January, R U L, or remain useful life was twenty years. After a reorganization, there was a reorganization scheme done by the company. The property, which is the office building that was fourteen million here, will, will has been no longer used by the company as an uh, office building or um, for the admin use. It was now being rented out to third party called Bumi Rata, maybe to generate income, right? Maybe uh, if they use, they don't generate income, so they go and rent it. Rent out the building, Mirata. So this means that there is a change of use of the building from admin purpose under PPE and now being held for rental under IP. And that is the case that need the company to reclassify the office building from being. Uh, uh, being accounted under PPE, but now being accounted under IP. Surrey adopted the fair value model in the subsequent measurement of its investment property. So fair value model, again, no depreciation, no impairment test. Fair value of the property as at the uh, 1st of January was 16 million, beginning of the year, meaning that after a year after you acquire, it was... Uh, being um, acquired, right? So there is a reorganization and the amount on the date of reorganization or the date of uh, the reclassification of the building to become an IP is 60 million on 1st of January. And another one was given at the end of the year, the same year, 31st of December, 2017. So there is a fair value adjustment at the beginning of the year and the fair value adjustment at the end of the year. And assuming 31st of December 2017 is the year end, as well as that is also the end of the current year. Advice three Burhan on the accounting treatment for the transfer. The question has made it very clear that there is a transfer on 1st of January and as well as for the year ended. So you also advise what to do on 1st of January as well as what to do on 31st of December 2017 at the end of the year in accordance with the requirement of MFRS 140 IP. Now, let's look at this diagram that I've drawn for you. There's a change in the use because of transfer of the PPE, and I put that in my red thing. There was a revaluation model being adopted for PPE, and now there's a change sign there to property, and that will be using fair value model. So let's plot the diagram again. First, put the date, 1st of January 2017, just a one year gap here, right? And at the end of the year, 31st of December. Then you should know that this is your current year, right? And then the remaining useful life on that day was 20 years on 1st of January 2017. The cost was 14 million. Cost is the initial cost, right? And because of that, you need to know that on that day, there is a transfer being made. So because there is a transfer, of course, you need to find out what are the carrying amount on that day. Carrying amount of the PPE, the property as PPE. So we go and calculate the depreciation, accumulated depreciation, because from 1st of January until um, 1st of January 2016, until 1st of January 2017, is only one year. So 14 million divided by 20 years times 1, 0 0.7 million. The carrying value is 13.3 million. Carrying amount, the carrying value is the same. Transfer. From IPPE admin use to IP to place on 1st of January 2017. You need to compare with the fair value of the office building on that date. So you are informed that that building has a fair value or the fair value assessment. The market price of the uh, building was 16 million. The difference between carrying value and, six, and uh, 16 million here, fair value will be treated according to the revaluation model um, principle, which is, is a surplus. Why surplus? Fair value is greater than the um, carrying value. And this surplus 
right? For the surplus, of course, it will be credited to the ARR if it's, this is the first time it's being revalued. So it will be recognized in the ARR, it will be credited in the ARR, right? And it will be debited to the building. This is under the record, right? About the building. And then the 16 million will be the deemed carrying value of the IP. So if it becomes an IP, uh, as of 1st of January 2017, the amount of the IP will follow what is the fair value of the building on the date that it is still a PPE. So it is 16 million. So this 16 million will be the carrying amount starting from 1st of January 2017 and depreciation will completely stop. Why I say completely stop? Because property is now using fair value model and under fair value model there are no uh, depreciation so uh, this will be the carrying amount on 1st of January 2017 since there are no uh, depreciation whatsoever and IP is adopting the fair value model I said earlier no depreciation for, for the whole year yeah and it will continue in the future years as well. It will stop as at 1st of January 2017, meaning that as at 31st of December 2016. So the 16 million here, right, will be the deemed carrying value of IP. However, if you notice here, the arrow here should be pointing at the carrying value. It should not point at the uh, fair value. I apologize for that uh, overlook, but I write that arrow should have pointed at carrying value. So you will compare this 60 million, which is the carrying value as at 31st of December, right, with the fair value. So let's just make some adjustments so that it becomes better. Hang on with me. I just changed the position of it. Okay. Let's just continue with where we stopped just now. Okay. We will continue. Okay, now it's correct. So the deem carrying value, deem carrying value, that's my pointer. Okay. The deem carrying value would be the fair value of the PPE office building. And now it becomes the carrying value as at 31st of December will be 16 million. Why 16 million? No change because there is no uh, decrease due to depreciation whatsoever since you adopt fair value model. So if you compare the fair value and the carrying value, and now it is an IP, right, starting from 1st of January 2017, it adopts fair value model. The difference is no longer a surplus, not a surplus, but the difference is treated as uh, the fair value change. So the gain on fair value change because the fair value is 16 million and as of 31st of December 2017, the fair value is 16.8. The carrying value is 16 million. So there is a gain. That gain will be credited to the SOPL under other income, right? If you were to do a little journal entry here, you can put here debit investment property credit. Uh, your gain on fair value in the SOPL, right? And that's what happened on that date. And the fair value of 16.8 million, if you are asked to prepare a soft PS at that date, will now no longer report the PPE, but it will report the property as an IP as at 31st of December 2018. And that will be under non-current asset investment property. 31st of December 2017. If you can uh, compare 31st of December 2016, maybe somewhere here, it is still an uh, item under PP. But today, 31st of December 2017, that is under 
I P put on the non-parent asset, the gain will be reflected in the SOPL. And it will be recognized in SOPL as other income. As I said earlier, that will be shown in the soft PS at 31st of December 2017. Next part of the question, question 3C, is for you to write the accounting treatment. That one is just a planning. The diagram that I showed you earlier is a planning before you can actually write a proper accounting treatment. So this one would help you with the planning for good answers and securing good marks. First of January 2017, there is a transfer from PPE to IP. So you need to mention what happened on that date, the transfer. Because there's a change in use. Still, what was the change in use from owner-occupied property to L to be rented out? So the word transfer and change in use is an important or uh, those important keywords. Transfer. Transfer be correct, which is from PPE to IP. You may also come across that there will be transfer from IP to P. The carrying value of the PPE on the day of transfer is 13.3. How do we get that? I've already shown you 14 million minus 0 0.7. But you must show these workings in the sentence or your accounting treatment explanation. The difference between the carrying value and the fair value, what are the different, I've, uh, which is the difference of 2.7. Show the working 16 million minus 13.3. That was when it is still an I, a PPE. It should be recognized and credited in the ARR. Why? Because they use the revaluation model. Actually, regardless whether the revaluation model is being used or cost model is being used when it is still a PPE before it is being transferred to be an IP, it is also the same accounting treatment. Any difference that arise either under revaluation model or under cost model, both will be treated as uh, part of ARR. Yeah? So the deemed carrying value of the IP will be the carrying, uh, will be 16 million, which is the fair value of the uh, uh, owner occupied property, it will be the deemed carrying value of the IP. Since IP is using fair value model, there is no depreciation. That's, that's an important statement. You give marks. You are given marks for that. And for the year ended the 31st of December 2017, remember the year and the, uh, the comparison that I made earlier, that's again on fair value change of 0 0.8 million, which is comparing the fair value versus the 6 million carrying value. And that would be recognized as other income in the SOPL. Okay, that's it for the discussion of the accounting treatment. My advice is that please plan by doing this so that you can have a better you know overview of what actually happened i thank you for watching i'll see you when i will see you